Hello everyone, my name is Kenny Carmody from the YouTube channel Meyer Gun Reviews and today we're looking at a new gun from Gamo. It is the Gamo Swarm Maxim in .177 caliber. It's a break barrel pellet rifle but this gun is a 10 shot repeater. You can fire 10 shots without reloading pellets. Uh, this gun sells for 179 to 199 for the most part it is a $199 gun. Uh, I've seen it at uh, on sale at Cabela's for $179.99. Uh, Sportsman's Guide has it for non-members at $189.99 and everybody else is pretty much $199.99. And that $179 price is only good for this .177 caliber the 22 calibers are still $200. It's a very innovative gun with its uh, uh, 10 round magazine. Uh, it's a, a 45.3 inch gun. It's got a 19.9 inch barrel. Uh, it's got a muzzle brake as well as the sound suppressor contained within the shroud. The bear gun weighs 5.64 pounds. With the scope mounted, it weighs 6.5 pounds. They uh, claim 30 pounds of cocking effort. I have measured it at 33.5 pounds. It comes with Crossman's uh, cat trigger. Uh, I have found this trigger very acceptable and it has a manual safety. You have to pull back to put it on safe push forward to release your safety. Uh, overall it's a very nice gun, very nice shape. Uh, let's take a close-up look at this gun. As with all the Maxims you can see it has an actual uh, muzzle brake on it. You know you can see right through it uh, that's uh, kind of a design that goes back to like World War II to reduce the recoil on a cannon your actual uh, silencer is within the shroud. It's a very large uh, shroud, uh, uh, kind of a composite material. And here you can see your action for uh, your 10 round magazine. And to remove the magazine, press down on this and it pops right out. And then press it back in once it's loaded. The way this works, you can see this spring right here. When you cock the gun, this part drops down over your uh, breech and as you cock it, this wire pulls it forward as a probe that pushes the pellet in and then uh, goes back in place. It's a little bit wobbly but it, it really does function quite well. Uh, you've got a pin with a C-clip on it right here to remove it and then just these two wires. The unit is replaceable. They will make uh, replacements if uh, you happen to break it. And the magazines, uh, they are also available uh, like $14.99. Uh, you can actually pick up a couple and uh, pretty much fire 20-30 rounds without uh, reloading pellets. As a composite stock, it's pretty decent shaped stock. Here you can see your CAT trigger. It has their patented uh, recoil reduction rail. It comes with a Gamo 3-9 power by 40 millimeter fixed objective scope. I found the scope to work quite well, uh, you know, like uh, between 4 and 5 power at 12 yards out to 9 power at 20 yards. Like I say, it's a pretty decent stock. It could use a higher raised cheek piece. Uh, the, this cheek rest really does not come into play. And it's got this O-ring around the butt pad indicating the red indicates 177 caliber, the green indicates uh, 22 caliber, and their recoil reduction pad or shock absorbing pad. 
I know I said I had washed my hands of Gamo. I just had uh, six of the last seven Gamos I'd had were all bad. Uh, that's six of the seven that I've done this year. And uh, I said I was washing my hands of Gamo, but they came out with this uh, uh, new uh, repeater system and figured, well, I've got to take a look at it. The magazine assembly and the auto loader do work quite well. I had absolutely no issues with it. I fired this gun over 300 times and uh, just shot after shot. There's been no issues. Uh, the only pellet that I had a problem uh, putting into the uh, magazine was the Predator Poly mags but they did work. It's just when I put the pellet in I had to kind of squeeze on the uh, pellet itself so when I dropped the pellet in I had to put the pellet sideways a couple of times and just kind of press in here with my finger and then rotate it to the next hole and uh, and every time I put one in I would just go like that and then rotate it to the next hole and it it did work out so there wasn't any pellets that I wasn't able to get into the magazine uh, including the Hornets and the Gamo Red Fires. The Predator Poly Mags were the only one that uh, there was any issue with and if I just press it in centered it worked just fine. Uh, it's very easy to load this uh, magazine so let's take a look at uh, loading up the magazine. This is our pellet clip. You can see by the white dot it's empty. There's the top. There's the asterisk in the shield. You know that it's empty and you can, should not cock the gun when that is forward. This is the front. On this side facing forward there's a rib that goes into a groove. Uh, on the front side of the slot for the pellet clip and it's very easy to load when you uh, just lay down like this just start putting your pellets in rotate the clip and this, this is the back side where it shows load you put the pellets in head first when you get halfway there you'll see a white dot pass by you know you're halfway and it just stays in place once you've got all the pellets in and on the top you can see it's the number 10 there that tells you how many times you can cock the rifle if it says 10, you're going to cock the rifle 10 times. If it says 5, you're going to cock the rifle 5 times. When it says 1, you've got one cock left. And when the asterisk is shown, you do not cock the rifle. Okay, here's where your magazine goes. Here you can see this, the groove for the slot. There's the slot on the, or the ridge on your clip. So well, that goes forward to your left, just place that in place, press down, you're ready to go. Okay, you can see that it's a relatively straightforward, simple to do, and uh, it tells you exactly how many times you can cock the gun before you're going to be insulting your last pellet, and uh, it, uh, this whole system worked flawlessly. I had no problem with it. I remember using the uh, Gamma Wildcat Whisper and played a little game called Blow Up the Red Dots. This would be a super fun gun to do that with. If you could hit a broadside of a barn while you were standing inside of it. Which this gun will not do. Now I know that Gamma makes good rifles. I've had them I've seen them. I looked at Rick Utzler's uh, review on this. He
he had no accuracy issues with his at all. His was a 22 caliber, but uh, his gun had been fired over 1,500 times and it worked flawlessly. This thing does everything flawlessly except hit the target. Uh, the gun is putting out low energy in my opinion. Uh, it's rated at 1300 feet per second shooting uh, alloy pellets, shooting the, what I use, uh, the RWS Hypermax 5.2 grains, which are a half a grain heavier than the, the PBA. Uh, this gun had a low of 1093, a high of 1137, and an average of 1115 feet per second, and a pretty high extreme spread of 43.88, and uh, muzzle energy averaged 14.36 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. It did much better shooting the RWS Hobby lead pellets, the 7 grain, it had a low of 986.2, a high of 1022, which was one lone shot above uh, 1,000 feet per second, everything else was below and the average was 997 feet per second. So that one high shot gave us a extreme spread of 35.90 and a standard deviation of 14.66. But that was an average of 15.94 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. That is acceptable. That is more than enough power to kill a rabbit or a squirrel at 20 yards. Uh, the most accurate pellet that I could find which means a sub five inch shot pattern was the Beeman Silver Arrow, which is a heavy pellet. It's an 11.57 grain. That had a low of 745.4 feet per second, a high of 755.7 feet per second, average 750.5 feet per second. Extreme spread was only 10.24 feet per second, standard deviation of five. That gave us 14 and a half foot pounds of muzzle energy. So I'm quite sure there's a lot of pellets in between that uh, generate even better muzzle energy than the uh, RWS Hobby lead pellets. But uh, I did not chronograph them because this gun did not shoot them worth the darn. I thought it was probably maybe the scope walking around. The problem is uh, with this piece right here, I'm very limited in to what scopes that I could use to put on there because the gamma scope is actually longer on the back half than it is the front half and my uh, hammers 3 to 9 by 40 AO scope would have come right up to this it, it just wasn't going to work on this gun the only rifle that or the only scope that I had that I could put on this gun that would fit was the uh, 3 to 9 by 32 millimeter adjustable objective scope off one of my Rugers. And I did try that and I managed to shrink the shot pattern by about one inch. So I, the scope might be part of the issue, but I think the main issue is with the gun. I don't know whether it's a crappy piston seal or if there's a problem in the barrel. But once again, I have gotten a lemon gamel. I know that they make good ones, but I just can't seem to find it. Uh, and this now makes a total of seven out of eleven gamel pellet rifles that were defective. Just, this is the sixth bad gamel rifle that I've gone through just in the past year. Uh, and overall seven out of eleven were bad including this one that makes two out of three gamma rifles that I have tried to review were bad and that just tells me that gamma has got a severe quality control problem they are putting out good guns I don't know which lines putting out the good ones which ones are putting out the bad ones but I know there's a high unemployment rate in Spain and there's a lot of good workers out there that would be willing to put this together right if Gamble would just uh, figure out who's screwing up the guns on the assembly line. 
can at least say there's good ones out there and bad ones out there and I keep on getting the bad ones so just let it be known uh, it's a crap shoot as far as getting a camo that works properly uh, this one for accuracy it just it was a really painstaking target shoot out there you know I just uh, two and a half three and a half inch shot patterns at 20 yards and that was after putting 300 rounds through this rifle I'm going to show you the accuracy test using the gamma scope it'll be a 10 shot uh, pattern and then I will show you the accuracy test using the Ruger scope which is uh, the same power but 32 millimeter but adjustable objective and uh, then we'll go from there Okay, we're going to give this gun one more try uh, replacing the gamma scope with a Ruger 3 to 9 by 32. See how we do. I don't know what the issue is. Uh, the the first two shot groups using this scope, you know, one of them four pellets through one hole, but six more all over the place, and uh, you know didn't have much going through one hole using the uh, Ruger scope, but at least it, you know it was an inch smaller pattern. That's all I can say. Uh, Gamo, if you've got a gun out there that works, send me one. Prove to me that you can make a gun that works. That's got some quality control to it. You know, my God, you know, 7 out of 11 rifles that I've gotten from Gamo have been bad. And, uh, like I say, I know that there's good ones out there, but you're Darn sure not shipping them to the retailers in Minnesota, that is for certain. The Gamo uh, Silent Cat, I bought one, it was bad, I took it back, got another one, brought it home, same thing, it was bad, gave up on that gun, uh, took it back, got the Gamo Bone Collector uh, Maxim, that one was bad, took it back, got another one brought it home. That one was bad. I didn't even want to face the guy at the return line again, so I kept that one and rebuilt it. Found out what the problem was. Chewed up piston seal. And then uh, I just saw a really good price on a Gamma Whisper Fusion Elite, and I said, well, we'll give it one more try. And sure enough, that one was bad too, so I took it back and didn't even bother getting another one, because, you know, why bring home a one more defective pellet rifle and I decided I would give Gamo one more try with this gun and it's an awfully fun gun to shoot except for the fact you can't hit the broadside of a barn while you're standing inside and I would just love to have a gun like this that was uh, accurate but this one I am going to return and I'm not going to try and get another one uh, to see if I luck out and get one that works. Uh, I just, I can't waste that much time and that many pellets on bad gambles. So, I'm going to show you 
just how much fun the gun can be to shoot. So here's a little clip of me uh, shooting this gun. Okay, we got the pellets loaded in the clip. Here's our ridge, which will be facing forward to your left side. Drop the clip in, snaps in place, ready to shoot. So if this gun was accurate, it would be a hell of a lot of fun. Too bad it's not accurate, because that is fun shooting like that. I could just imagine playing blow up the dots with a gun that you can fire as quick as this one. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to wash my hands of this gun. And once again, game always let me down. Well, that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, so. Uh, it can be a real fun gun, buy at your own risk. My name is Kenny Cormandy, and thank you for watching.